Yeah, I, I'm going to have a very short 20 minutes presentation, very dull, about very peaceful things. Although maybe when you hear my accent, it doesn't sound like peaceful. Anyway, but of this, can we see? Well, this is it. Thanks. Uh, I'm going to tell about a small subdomain of today's application of artificial intelligence, which is uh, smart mobility and even smaller part of that, which is called autonomous driving. But uh, I want to talk about it because we believe that this is a real, real big changer. Uh, when somebody asks you, do you like driving? How do you like driving? You always think about something like this. A typical automaker presentation showing you a car going into a highway, somewhere to the mountains, or the sunset. Uh, but the reality, as we know, is a little bit different. And in general, we all know that in our everyday experience, driving is very, very bore boring, tiresome experience. We believe that a big change is coming, and it's coming very soon, sooner than we expect. And this big change is of, is of this huge caliber. Just a hundred years ago, we had this huge ch change, huge revolution in, in the mobility industry, where just in less than 20 years, we switched from this to this, from horses and carriages to full on, streets full of automobiles. We believe that something like this is happening now. Because today's technology, today's hardware, uh, just compute, which we already have, sensors, which we already have, is enough, and of course, the software which we add to this, is enough to provide a solution, which is, a comp which is something completely different to what we have in driving today. If you install a compute device in your car, if you install several lidars, lasers, several radars, and several cameras, you get, and you add a software, you get a solution which, is, which, is, which gives you autonomous. Uh, for those who want to understand briefly how it works, just four components. First, the car needs to understand where it is with a very precision quality, just one centimeter precision. The car needs to know where it is. The software does it. The car needs to understand what's around this car. And this is more or less what you have in your uh, adaptive cruise control. Cars around you, pedestrians, uh, scooters, buildings, traffic lights. Then the most challenging part is to predict where the, this car will be in the next 10 seconds, or that car will be in the next second, or what happens in the next millisecond. And the last part is just to, to give you a route to go from here, knowing all this, how to get from point A to point B. Uh, people don't believe that it's coming very soon. People believe that a lot of different new features are needed before we have the uh, full autonomous driving. People believe that we need, for example, how are you going to drive, how are you going to locate your car if you don't have GPS signal in big cities where the tall buildings uh, screen the, the satellites. We don't need it. Uh, the car understands where it is without any, it's good to have a GPS, but if, even if you don't have it, the car is able to locate itself with one centimeter precision quality. Then people would say that uh, how you're going to drive when you don't have special infrastructure, when, when the roads are as they are today. We don't need it. Uh, the automated driver which we're building will be driving just like us humans, just a little bit better. On the same streets with no special infrastructure. It's good to have it, like it would, would, it would be good if uh, the traffic lights would emit, in addition to the colors, uh, red, yellow, green, they would emit some frequency to tell the car that it's red now. But even if there, if there is nothing like this, nothing additional, the car is able to understand that this is green or this is red. And finally, 
people would say, well, but you don't have connectivity everywhere. How are you you're going to drive in the areas where there is no connectivity? We don't need it. The algorithms are built such that the car is completely anonym, um, autonomous. It's good to have it, connectivity, and from time to time we're going to have it, uh, but it's not necessary. Uh, by the way, that, that was a real ride in Las Vegas uh, almost a year ago, but when we started, it was like th less than three years ago. It was uh, the beginning of 2017. It looked like this. It was the first prototype. Uh, we started to deploy and testing it, and uh, by May, we put the first car on the street. By December 2017, we were able to drive on public roads. That was a big milestone. We just put our cars, cars on the streets, regular streets of regular Moscow weather, and the car was, dr was uh, driven by itself. You see the safety engineer there, but he doesn't do anything. Then, uh, half a year later, we took a, a self-driving ride, almost 800 kilometers in Russia. And then the main, the very important milestone came. We launched in August of uh, 2018, more than a year ago. We launched a full taxi service in a small town. You, you can see this is a new town called Inapolis, where engineers live. Uh, something like 4,000 families live there. But these are real streets with real cars. Sometimes you can see cars here. Of course, the uh, driving conditions there are very easy, but this is a real city. And for more than a year, people can use regular taxi application to call for a, for a taxi, get a car with nobody at the wheel. And I think we are the only ones to provide a taxi service with nobody of the, uh, at the wheel, and still are. You sit on the rear seat, go from A to B, leave the car, shut the door, and the car goes. It works. It works for more than a year. We had more than uh, 4,000 rides, almost 5,000 soon. Uh, and it's real. So in small environments, in some environments, self-driving is already working. And this is the good news, with nobody at the wheel. And then to go from this to real driving on real streets, you need a lot, a lot. You need to drive a lot of miles. So we started massive testing on public roads everywhere we could. We're now driving in Russia, we're driving in USA, and we're driving in Israel. Different regulations, but we managed to uh, launch our cars there. And uh, what our goal is uh, to, to have as long, as, as much driving as we can, because what we're building is bu we're building an autonomous driver. We're building a software which is a driver, which replaces us, human drivers. Uh, and uh, we just believe that it will be more safe and uh, better driving than, than us humans. Uh, these are nice pictures. I will show you some anecdotal pictures as well. This is Tel Aviv. You can see the bicyclists on, just on the public road. Uh, and as you see, the algorithm sees them pretty well. The car stops, then it goes again. This is again Tel Aviv. People are crossing the street without any permit. They are crossing, it's fine. They see that the car is stopping. They are crossing, and the car goes. This is when you drive at 90 kilometers per hour, you can have somebody crossing your lane from left to right. That's also OK. Sometimes on, in a village, uh, you can drive like this and then see something strange going into unusual direction. And that's also OK. And the car, the software should be built re reliable enough to see any circumstance like this. Uh, or this is a good picture. One way, two lanes in the night. The car is change, change the lanes. The driver wanted to report the error, and then he sees the car, and then he understands it's, it's two bicycles. The car saw those bicycles, and it works. Or something like this. You cannot describe everything you, you're going to see on the street. This is a fallen tree, I think, in Moscow. That's OK. We stop, we go. That's fine. 
So all we need now is to train this automated driver. To train it, we need millions of miles. So far, we, uh, we drove more than 1.5 million of miles, which, uh, which, is, which uh, places our company in the higher league. There is only four or five people, companies in the world which drove these many miles. Uh, to, dr to drive these many miles, we're building the fleet. Currently, we have 50 cars uh, driving on the streets of Moscow and Tel Aviv. We're going to have 100, uh, 100 cars by the end of this year. And the goal is to drive 1 million kilometers a week. This is, this is what we, we're going to achieve uh, next year. And now, so technically, technology is there. I believe that we will be able to build a, a software or a system, software and hardware, capable of driving the streets better than us humans. Why I believe it, it is important and why I believe it will happen sooner than we think. First of all, yes, technology is already there. But there are two underlying reasons. One is ethics, another is economics. On the ethical front, we all know that we humans are very bad drivers. Humans kill more than a million of other humans every year on the streets of planet Earth. If uh, all those accidents would, would be reported in the news, it would be 20 planes a day. So definitely it should be improved, especially if we know that 90% of those accidents are generated by humans, by the human driving. Because we humans, uh, we, we are bored with driving. And when we are bored, we try to make driving a little bit more fun. We're speeding. We're changing lanes, we behave somehow. Uh, the algorithm shouldn't do this, and actually it's dangerous. Or when we're tired in the evening, we can sleep at the wheel, and it kills us and the car on the next lane. So it all should be avoided and should be avoided through the algorithms. Because everything which is boring, which is tiresome, could be easily automated. The humans should not be like this. Everything which is easy to automate should be automated. We must not be driving anything. And the second reason is economical. People would say, okay, uh, self-driving is, is decades away because your equipment is too expensive. Look, we have a car which, which is $30,000 car, and you want to put another $50,000 worth of sensors and equipment on it, who would buy it? The answer is nobody. This is not how it's going to happen. Actually, if we look at the street, at, at any professional fleet, like a taxi fleet, what we're going to see, we see a car, which is, yes, $30,000 car, with three-year amortization, it's $10,000 a year spent on a car. But together with the car, there is a bit of buy a robot there. An average taxi has 1.5 taxi drivers on it to drive 18 hours a day. And an average driver, depends on the market, makes something like $20,000 a year. Because it's salary, vacation, insurance, and so on. So in, on top of any taxi, on top of 10,000 a year of any taxi, you should add 30,000 cost of a driver. Whereas today, we have the same car, 10,000 a year. Last year, our equipment, all these lidars and radars and compute, was, uh, the cost was $150,000. 50,000 a year, a lot. But this year already, it's 90,000 a year, because the, this is IT. The prices go down very quickly. So today, it's equal. In the cost of self-driving car is, to, uh, is equal to the cost of a uh, human driving car. And of course, the prices are going down further, and we're going to have cheaper cars in professional fleets very soon. And of course, this dictates uh, where the application will be. It will be professional fleets, first of all. It will be taxi or public transportation fleets. We need to replace the, uh, humans there. It will be cargo transportation, lorries. And the third thing is not so obvious. We need to replace the couriers. The courier is the least paid job in the world. 
only students or pensioners can afford this. But this is the, the largest spent uh, item in any delivery system. So we cannot make it cheaper, but this is very expensive. So anything which replaces the couriers will be economically viable. So that's actually what we're going to do. We believe that the technology is there. Econ economics and ethics dictates us to implement it as soon as possible. And it will be implemented gradually. First, we will see them on outskirts of big cities where the new roads are regular. Then we will be operating some specific districts of the cities. And then finally, we go to the centers. But to, to achieve this, we need a lot of training. We need to, to bring our fleet of autonomous vehicles, which we have hundreds now, to real streets. And here we face regulation. There is competition between the companies for technology, but there is also a competi competition between the countries for regulation. Those countries who regulate it the right way will be the first to have this technology on their streets. And that's why we're here to ask this question. Maybe Ameri uh, Armenia should be ahead of American regulation, ahead of China, or ahead of Russia. Actually, these are three markets which are more, more or less regulated for self-driving now. So let's do something here. Let's take it down, make it self-driving. <laughs> and then it should come to this. The drive, boring driving in traffic jams or whatever on, on streets when taxi drivers sh should not be working 12 hours on the streets, should be automated drivers. Uh, the streets will be given to automated, and us humans will be driving only when we wish to drive. Something like this, nice and beautiful. And actually, this happened, this exactly happened at the previous revolution, a hundred years ago. This is what happens with horses now. There used to be a driving force on the streets, now we're just enjoying horses. And by the way, today there is almost 60 million horses in the world more than they were 100 years ago. So let's enjoy the driver. Thank you.